Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Your Views on the News, a special edition with me, Azad Ali. Now, on Monday, the UK's Sharia Council stand, stood accused of putting women in danger following a controversial documentary that was aired by the BBC. The Panorama programme showed uh, Sheikh uh, Shweb Hassan discouraging a woman from telling the police about domestic violent abuse. Now, is this another case of scaremongering about Islam, or do we need to actually look at what's happening behind the doors of our Sharia councils? Islam Channel spoke to Dr. Shweb Hassan, the scholar who was secretly filmed by Panorama. Let's take a look and see what he had to say. The programme appears to show in one case where a woman suffering from abuse was advised by yourself that were she to go to the police about it, that it would, in your words, be the final blow to her marriage. Such a statement was commented on by the head of the Crown Prosecution Service in the Northwest, who called it dangerous. Are your pronouncements dangerous? Around 30% were based upon domestic violence. Never ever, not a single woman was asked to go back to, to her husband. Now this case, which as I said, it was a fabricated case of a woman, if a woman comes and uh, says that she is not looking for divorce, she does not want to leave her house, she does not want to, to break her marriage. So what advice a sane person is going to give? That is the advice which I have given. Try to reconcile with your husband, but if he becomes uh, much aggressive, then of course you have to go to the police. And in many cases we, we ask the woman to go to the police straight away, and some women they decline. Panorama alleges that your organization asked that women pay in order to achieve a divorce, and that in one woman's case, both you and your wife place the onus on the woman to review her behavior to avoid being physically harmed by her husband. Why do you make it so difficult for a woman in an abusive relationship to get a divorce? First of all, if the woman were not getting relief from us, why they are coming in such a large number to Islamic Sharia Council? In 2010, we received 700 cases. In 2011, 571. In 2012, 584 cases. Why? We are not knocking at their door. We are not asking them to come to us. They come to us with their own free will because they know that they are going to get this relief from us. If there are just a single person or a two women or three women who are not happy with the treatment. What about the majority, which is the silent majority of the women who got relief from us? Why the Panorama programmers did not look at that vast majority of satisfied women? Why they are looking at just one or two cases? Tell me any institution throughout the world from which all the people are pleased. In each and every institution, there, there must be one or two complaints. And that is something normal. And we try to rectify these complaints whenever they come. And uh, this is how we, we behave. And uh, there is, of course, a room for improvement as well. And we are going to improve. Well, there are thought to be around 85 uh, Sharia councils in the UK, which deal mostly with marriage and family problems. Critics say that there are parallel legal system that fails to protect vulnerable women. But others say Muslims in Britain have the right to use arbitration services that are in line with Islamic teaching. Well, what do you think? Was the Panorama program fair and balanced? Why do you think there's another, yet another undercover film on Sharia councils when we've not seen on any other arbitration services offered in other religions? Do these Sharia councils, however, offer protection to women? Or do our Sharia councils actually need reform? Or are they just the latest victim of Islamophobia? Do call in. Uh, I particularly want to hear from uh, sisters out there who have used uh, the services of Sharia council, whether positive or negative, and really tell us how was it for you. Um, the phone lines will be open shortly. Um, just before that, let me introduce you to my uh, studio guest. Uh, in the studio, I have with me Judge Kushid Drabu, a CBE, who was the UK's first judge. Maulana Shahid Raza, OBE, Chair of the Mosques and Imams National Advisory Body, MINAB. Uh, Imam Abdullah Hassan, Islamic Advisor at the Anti-Domestic Violence Charity Noor. And Aina Khan, who is the Head of the Islamic and Asian Division at Duncan Lewis Solicitors. Welcome to you all and Asalaamu Alaikum. 
Uh, thank you for joining me. If I, if I can actually first come to you, uh, Maulana Shahid Raza. Uh, Minab uh, is looked at uh, as an institution that is looking at the mosques uh, and imams and the services, the Sharia services that the Muslim community need. Now, this is a second, uh, pan it's not a second panorama program, but it's a second program on Sharia councils, both who've uh, kind of made the allegation that women uh, in particular are not really treated fairly and they find it, uh, you know, a hard time to get the services that they are uh, due Islamically. First of all, thank you very much for having me in this very important program. And uh, let me right in the beginning clarify that uh, I was chair of MINAB, but now uh, Maulana Sarfaraz Madani of Birmingham, he is the chair of MINAB. I am one of the executive members of MINAB. And at the uh, to Maulana yeah. Sarfaraz uh, Madani for that. Uh, and uh, I am also executive secretary of one of the Sharia councils in the UK that was established in 1985. Mm. And since uh, its beginning, I have been serving at this Sharia council. And uh, I have a first-hand experience of dealing with so many cases mm. over such a long period. Uh, this is very sad that uh, uh, some sections of the media are targeting uh, our institutions. Mm. Uh, as I have said in my own response to Panorama, that uh, there is a very positive and constructive side of the Muslim community's work in this country mm -hmm. that also needs to be highlighted. Uh, Minab is one of the best examples of Muslim communities achievement mm. where uh, in the history of the United Kingdom, Kingdom's Muslim community, first time major Muslim organizations, Shias and Sunnis, Sufis and Salafis, all have joined their hands to serve the Muslim community through raising profile of imams and mosques in mm. this country. Mm. So my main concern is that uh, Muslims have achieved a lot. That achievement also needs to be shared by the wider so do you, do you, community. Do you find that the Panorama program was perhaps unfairly portraying uh, the services of Sharia councils? Uh, if we take into context all the Sharia councils, mm. uh, it was indeed a very selective approach where it seems that uh, the program was designed to highlight some of the problems. Mm. So they did not include other Sharia councils where they could have found some of the good examples okay. of Sharia council services. Okay, um, uh, I know there are a lot of callers waiting. I will come to you, um, but I'm just going to give my studio guests an opportunity to make some opening remarks. Um, uh, judge Drabu, uh, being a judge, uh, you, you're used to uh, the professional approach, if you like, uh, of how uh, an institution or arbitration or um, complaints and, and, and things are handled. Um, in your view, is it fair for uh, us or the general public to expect Sharia councils to meet the standards of, say, uh, civil courts and others? May I first of all explain that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not here to justify or criticize Panorama. Sure. As far as I'm concerned, it was not a program, it's not a program worth talking about. Mm. The sad thing is that it's, it was portrayed, it was broadcast from a public service channel, mm. and it portrayed a very bad image of Sharia councils generally mm. using one poor example. Mm. They did not even bother to give the positive image from the same Sharia council, mm. as Sheikh uh, Mujib Suhaib was saying. Mm. It is very, very unfortunate. Having said that, we can't get away from the problem, from the issue that we have a problem mm. as, a, as a community. But to expect Sharia councils to be at par with civil judges operating in UK 
is expecting too much. Mm. But it can be done. We need time. We need patience of the community, and we need understanding from the political establishment as well. Mm. We will own the problem, we can deal with the problem, and inshallah, we will remedy the problem. Because the great thing is, our community is full of really fantastic people, mm. like Sister Aina here, like Maulana Shahid Raza's leadership. We are not short of people. We can actually turn things around. The only thing we need to do is to be clear in our hearts that we have a problem and we've got to sort it out. Not rely on the government, okay. not rely on anybody. Sure. Uh, and, and on that point, I, um, I know if I come to you, um, we do have a problem. And you, you've kind of done a lot of research and specialised on uh, the issues of unregistered marriage, uh, where the Islamic uh, marriage takes place, but then it's not registered um, at, at the uh, uh, registrar's office. Uh, just explain to us what kind of problems this leads to, um, and just touch upon what uh, Judge Drabu mentioned about owning the problem. Well, I'm a family law specialist, and I specialize in Islamic uh, family law as well as practicing under mainstream English law. So all my solutions have to work under English law, but also provide the satisfaction to Muslim families that they are uh, uh, arriving at the right solution for them under Sharia. So having looked at that, for the last 15 years, there's been a growing need for that, and clients are asking for this themselves. Nobody's mm. making them do it. They're asking for solutions that work because they're British Muslims. The sad thing is the family breakdowns are going up every single year. We can't shy away from it. Mm. It's a massive problem. It's an increasing problem. The under 30s are not even registering their marriages. So I'm finding about 80% of the marriages that are coming to my attention are not registered under civil law. That's growing with every year. Mm. So it's a massive issue legally because there's no matrimonial legislation to protect those couples in the event of a breakdown. What then happens is they are treated as girlfriend or boyfriend. Right. And then they've got no rights under the law. So people who say, why do they have this parallel legal system? English law can help them. They miss the point that the majority of Muslims will not be able to use English law to resolve their financial because issues they're, they're anyway. Because they registered exactly. in the first place. So that's why the need is growing all the time. There are masses of uh, women who have felt grateful to the Sharia councils for releasing them from a miserable marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were set up. However, a child who was born at the time the Sharia councils were set up would be nearly 30 now. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to raise this issue and face it head on. Yeah. As a community, we are now mature enough mm -hmm. to resolve our own issues. Let's do that together. Yeah, and uh, Imam Abdullah Hassan, if I can bring you in, um, I mean, your organisation, uh, No Domestic Violence, is set up specifically to highlight this issue of domestic violence, because that's, that's another taboo kind of area in the Muslim community. Um, one of the major accusations from Panorama was that um, the Sharia Council were um, you know, telling their uh, clients not to go to the police when domestic abuse has taken place. I mean, how, A, did you see the program? I mean, how, how did you find that position? And of, of course, uh, Sheikh Shweb Hassan has clarified it. Uh, he, he's never, they've never forced anyone to go back to an abusive relationship. I, I did watch the program. And uh, we at Noor, we've been working with, we start, started the organization three, four years. And since then, we've received a number of particularly women coming to us and complaining about, you know, husbands beating them, abusing them and so on and so forth. And we also had a number of women coming to us whom they sought help from Sharia councils within the UK. But unfortunately, uh, although the Panama program, they misjudged the situation, they are very biased perhaps, but we can't deny the fact that there is a problem. As mm -hmm. Sister mentioned, that over 30, 40 years, we've not really evolved, we've not, we've not really mm -hmm. developed. And he's, he's taking Panorama programs and other programs to highlight their problems. Mm. And there are problems. And, and you know, we received uh, some uh, women who uh, email us and contact us, and say, they say that we approached the Sharia councils, but they did not offer us any solution or help. And they, what we think that they gave, gave was a cultural understanding of what mm. the situation is. Mm. So uh, we, we have a number of cases, ongoing cases at the moment, who have come to us say that my husband is abusive, he is not treating me well, and the Sharia Council, some of them are saying, all of them, mm. some of them are saying, you know, I have to be patient, I have to go back, and so on and so forth. Mm. So, uh, you know, there, there is a problem in our, in, our, in our view, and we have to deal, deal with it. 
from the Muslim community, uh, as, as the panelists said, that governments or BBC or any other media, they don't need to um, open the door for us. We but need this to is, ourselves. This is, this is the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, um, just before I come back to you, I'll, I'm just going to take a couple of callers. Um, they've been waiting very patiently. I believe Ali uh, from London is on the line. Assalamu alaikum, Ali. Hello. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Yeah, I just want to make um, two points on, um, very quickly. The first point is that I watched that Panorama program. Uh -huh. And that Panorama program, I mean, one thing that really gets me, I'm in media myself, yeah, uh -huh. and I work with a number of councils throughout Britain, yeah, and I've noticed one thing is that I know a lot of Hindus, Sikhs, Christians, and they, they, they had the same problem where they have this domestic violence, but they never shed light on that. Mm. At the end of the day, they love Hindus, they love Sikhs, they hate Islam. And that program was so unbiased, yeah, so silly. I just think it's just pathetic. But the second point is that our British, our, Pak, our women, yeah, Muslim, Pakistani, and Bangladeshi, Pakistani and Bangladeshi, and Indian women, yeah, Muslim women, mm -hmm. they are getting encouraged by the British media. I'm not being sexist, but I'm just saying, yeah, that women, yeah, they're getting, they're looking at British women, and mm -hmm. they're looking at, oh, these women do this, let's go against our husband. What proof do you have that men are beating their women up? Mm -hmm. I mean, I travel okay. up and down the country, and there's so many Asians. But I've got to say that, especially our Pakistani... So do, do, do you think uh, domestic violence isn't really uh, that bad in the Muslim community? It's not. It's, cra it's okay. all rubbish. Because, our, our, I mean, I'm, not, I'm Pakistani myself, but I'm picking up Bangladeshi and Pakistani women, yeah? Mm. In, in London, what they do is they just look at white women and they think, oh, let's go to the council. Okay. The, the, the government helps them out. The government gives them money. They go to the police, get domestic violence. It's all the, you know, our women are giving, our women, especially Asian women, are giving us a very bad name. Thank all right, Ali, um, th thank you for your call. Uh, I'm sure the panel uh, would love to respond to you immediately, but I'm going to ask them to hold uh, their tongues just for a little bit longer. Let's take our next caller. Um, let's see who's on the line. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Your name, please. Uh, Mohammed from Northamptonshire. Uh, uh, I, I, have, I yeah. have three points here. Mm -hmm. I remember this girl, Corbyn. She is, um, I'm, I'm afraid she is rather biased. I remember her uh, reporting on Iraq mm. before the invasion of Iraq. And she really, she was a tool of the, of the establishment to, to portray Iraq to the rest of the world as a dangerous state. Mm. Uh, and she was, she was really, uh, uh, things, things were not right at that time. And uh, the Shura Council in itself is, is invented simply because we are humans, we make mistakes. Mm. And I know that the Shura Council will only uh, interested in the family unity and, and maintaining the welfare of every member of the family. Sometimes we have to suffer in order to get proper family unity and maintain our society. But okay. the third point really, despite, despite all the uh, Islamophobic programs and, uh, and, and all the media, in fact, if you take Islam out of the media, they will find nothing to talk about. Mm. Uh, uh, Islam is still the fastest growing religion in this country. Thank mm. you very much. Okay, thank you, Mohammed, uh, for your call. Let's take uh, our last caller before the break, uh, a sister from North London. Asalaamu Alaikum, sister. You're on air. Your views, please. Yes, please. I did that. I did use the Shaya Council, and uh, um, for me, it's um, positive and negative because uh, um, in a legal point that uh, I got a talaq from my husband, but I didn't get nothing from, and I was expecting I would get something from Shaya Council. Okay. Um, w w when you say you didn't get nothing, in, in what, what sense, sister? Like, you know, like my hair or children from my family or even the support, uh, like okay. for the children, you know, maintenance or anything. Right. So I do, um, like, give my comments on that they, they do need to improve, you know, so because mm. I really wanted to go through Islamic only. Yeah. But yeah. My husband, because I was married here, I did went through English towards and I didn't get nothing from there either because of um, my husband and the family all from yeah. here. So Sister, can I just clarify one point? You said you didn't get your mahar. Is uh, that right? Mahar, jewelry, whatever, you know. So you, I you did get as a divorcee. Oh, okay, okay. But I didn't get nothing, you know. And okay. two, I've got two children from my um, from the marriage, but uh, you know, the, to take, the, I used to let him come and see, let them uh, children see uh, the father. Hmm. But since the talaq happened at the pronoun, so I stopped. Uh, but uh, to go and uh, you know to. Let my children meet the father. Mm. I, I couldn't do that as well because um, you know, like 
going to the family and their fam family having a problem, you know, mm. well, we don't want nothing to do with this and all this. So it's like um, it was totally cut off. Plus, uh, as a father, he's not doing nothing, not even English law, not even uh, like Sharia law. Okay. All right, so thank you. That's the view only, please. But okay. I've got nothing else. Okay, thank you, sister, uh, for your call. I literally got <coughs> a few minutes, but just want to, uh, Imam Shahid Raza, just on this issue of mahar. Um, the mahar, uh, why would the Sharia Council not get her mahar? Uh, that's owed to her. Is that, that's not yes, right, is almost, it? Yes, uh, almost in 90% cases, we are approached and we are asked that can we do something in order to help these women to get their mahar or the standing amount of mahar from their estranged husbands. The problem is that the Sharia Council has no legal power to adjudicate. Mm. Even if we give a ruling that the mahar should be returned but, to the wife. So, but the Sharia Council would give that ruling, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, Sharia Council. Okay. We just want to clarify. Yeah, I mean, Sharia, of course, you Sharia don't have Council the power to uh, enforce it. Exactly. But you would give that ruling. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, which just sounded very strange to me. Okay. It's important uh, to know that um, I use English law to enforce mahar under English contract law. All right. So it is possible. You have to be very, very ingenious to do it. I see. I see. <laughs> and and just uh, on uh, Abdul Hassan, if I bring you in, uh, the brother when he mentioned about women, uh, Asian women giving a uh, bad name and the DV isn't that bad. I mean, you're dealing with it. I mean, I don't know if the brother has read any statistics in within the UK, uh, in the non-Muslim community and the Muslim community. The domestic violence is a problem. It's an increasing problem within the UK community and the Muslim community is there's probably more of a problem in our Muslim community because there are underreported cases within the Muslim community. So I'm not sure where he's getting that. I know we have to also, it's a, the, the language about us and them, the media is against us, the government is against us, everyone is against us. Mm -hmm. They want to take our women and uh, corrupt them. You know, this, this language is in the ancient times. You know, we are living, this is our country, we have to make a positive contribution in our, in our country. Yes, there will be people have certain people have agendas. That, that is fine. But what positive contribution are we making? Mm -hmm. You know, we have to rectify our own problems. If, if it's going to take a panorama program to highlight the issues the Sharia, of the Sharia Councils, then it's a sad reality mm -hmm. when the Sharia Council have been established for the 30, last 30, 40, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and just quickly before the break, Judge Rob, we're about. Uh, Jane uh, Corbyn uh, and her approach. Yeah. Uh, I mean, w w I have watched it. One example, she called Sheikh uh, Shweb Hassan's desk a dais. Is that what a dais looks like? It does look like a dais, and I think in the informality that we now have mm. on matters of family, as well as other tribunals, I think it is inappropriate to have a dais of that kind, okay. because it is it is absolutely crucial for people who are using such systems okay. to feel happy. I'm going to have to interrupt happy. you because we're coming yes. right to the break. Sure. I'll see you after the break, inshallah. <laughs>